This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Baseball is officially back, and so is Rob Friedman, Pitching Ninja, joining us once again for today. We're going to pick his brain about what he learned at the All-Star break. We're going to talk to him about pitching matchups for today, talk some strikeout props, and get you ready to begin your second half on a high note. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, joined here as mentioned by Rob Friedman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitch. Ninja, find his work on Peacock, MLB.com, Fox, and of course here at FanDuel Sportsbook as well. Rob, welcome back from the All-Star break. How you doing? I'm doing great. Tired, but ready to go. Ready yeah, you were out in Seattle, hanging out with Ben Verlander, trying not to die. Um, you know, it seemed like it was quite an adventure, but uh, what was the highlight for you of the All-Star game in Seattle? What was the highlight? Um, not dying. I think that was good. <laughs> like, we had a bed, and Ben, we was about uh, the home run derby, and I lost because... I'm not a home run guy. Like I hope no one hits home runs. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he technically had to throw me over the. the edge. <laughs> so I had Pete Alonso winning it. And I feel like you too. I and feel like work. I feel like Pete Alonso might be like a closet pitching ninja fan uh, based on the way things went there. So maybe you need to recruit Pete Alonso to get like some mop up duties. So you can get some gifts out there at Pete Alonso. Cause I think he might be on your side actually. Well, I mean, he definitely got painted to death yeah. during that. I mean, you know, staying away from his nitro zone, good plan. Like if you're a pitcher, I yep. get it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, it looked like it was a lot of fun out there in Seattle. It looked like you were talking to a lot of different pitchers. You've got a full podcast up uh, over on your YouTube page talking about different pitch grips. Uh, any insights you gleaned from talking to guys out there? Just because like, I feel like for you, especially being on the ground and talking to people has to be so valuable. Oh, it's it's fantastic. I mean, the things that jumped out at me are a lot of pitchers really want to understand why their pitches move the way they do, and they yeah. they know a ton about it. You kind of expect that in in reality, but I think a lot of people assume that pitchers, oh, they're just you know they they throw the ball and we all look at the stats. No, they look at the stats too, yeah. and they're looking at video and movement numbers and stuff to make sure their pitches are moving right. So the knowledge of pitchers is huge. Um, and then Josiah Gray like pitch, picks up a pitch grip every other day, I think. Like I think he throws as many as you, Darvish, now. Um, so I expect big things out of him. I love the energy that he brings and the the desire to keep learning. Like that dude will leave no stones unturned to, to make his game better. And it was cool to see him get to pitch too. You know, kind of a reward for it seems like – constantly tinkering again you know you don't want to over tinker but like he is tinkering he's trying to learn even though he's super young still it seems like he is on the right path because he got some stuff too so it seems like when you combine intelligence curiosity with some stuff i feel like long term it's it's pretty okay to be high on him going forward oh totally he's one of those guys that will not let himself fail so yeah. That's what I like is he holds himself to a high standard, wants to keep learning. And if he, if things aren't working for him, he's going to figure out a new way to make himself better. Like Ed, he just added a sweeper apparently that I don't know if I've ever called it one, but he picked it up in the last month. All right. Well, there you go. I'll have to look forward to that uh, when digging into his next start. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. That pitching staff kind of has some fun dudes in it secretly. So um, definitely going to be fun to watch them going forward. We're talk some strikeout props and talk about potential strikeout leaders for tonight uh, across Major League Baseball in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We are here every weekday talking MLB, NASCAR, PGA, whatever it may be on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also check us out in video form on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Let's dig in now to Friday night, Rob. And of course, we do have uh, you Darvish out there for today to kick things off. He will be the second pitcher to throw a pitch in the second half of the MLB season. When you look at the pitchers on tonight's slate, Rob, who stands out to you in terms of strikeout props for tonight? So I was looking at Alcantara versus Kramer mm -hmm. in the, uh, the Orioles-Marlins game. And, you know, Kramer coming off a big effort against the Yankees. I kind of like his where his confidence is. And I think Sandy's turned it around a little bit. 
Um, you know, the, the only bump has been the Braves, and that's a bump for everybody. Like only giving up, only giving up four runs against the Braves is like a shutout, basically. So <laughs> I give them a buy on that. What to you did you see in Alcantara's recent outings that led you to believe that he's turned a corner? Because I've been searching all year trying to find, <laughs> okay, this is it. This is it. No, this is it. This is it. And it's like, it's a tough matchup here too. But the strikeout number is low. It's four and a half for Alcantara, minus 134 on the own, on over. Almost identical for Kramer at four and a half, minus 136 for him. What to you made you think that Alcantara had figured something out? I've seen his change up return a little bit more to normal, and that's where I thought he was struggling. So uh, to me, seeing his, again, a couple of good games, his stuff is there. Like It's not like a velo drop or anything yeah. like that. I wouldn't have any doubt that with that change up now being more dialed in that he's going to be able to put it together today. Now, of course, saying that, it won't happen, but my <laughs> logic is there. I feel it. Right. Right. And it's based on what you see. And I think that's always going to be valuable too. Uh, so a contra of four and a half is minus 134. I love Dean Kramer personally. I think that he's super fun. It's a low strikeout team in the Marlins, but um, Kramer, it seems like he's unlocked something like the past two or so months. And it's a large sample now of him pitching really well, 25% strikeout rate, his past 11 starts. What puts you on Kramer as well here? It was exactly that. Like, I mean, he's slowly or, or I guess under the radar picked up a good stretch of K's and I yeah. kind of like him for five today. Like, I think, I think both of those guys, that seems like a pretty good pick to me. That should be a fun game to watch. Uh, so liking Alcantara over four and a half, minus 134. Dean Kramer over four and a half at minus 136 in that Marlins versus Orioles game. Which other props are you looking at for tonight, Rob? I would, I mean, I think Tyler Glass now might strike out 400 today. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's been, he's been really nasty. Yeah. And I could see him having a fairly sizable game today, you know, against the Royals. That seems like a good matchup. Glass now strikeout prop is seven and a half right now, minus 140 on the over. Looking at my numbers, so I have strikeout projections, Rob, that I run myself based on pitch counts and stuff like that. I have Glass now projected for 8.7, which sounds low probably based on it being Tyler Glass now, but that's like a 90th percentile number because it's hard to get high strikeout projections high. And it's still above this number too of seven and a half with minus 140 on the over because it's Tyler Fre freaking Glass now. <laughs> Um, pitch count has been good enough, I would say, uh, better than I thought it'd be too when he's not cramping. Um, and he's facing a team that will strike out for sure. Not the best play discipline out of, uh, Canton city. So I get why you're, you're high in glass now here. It kind of seems like assuming the weather's okay. It's kind of a, unfortunately pun intended here, perfect storm for glass now to rack up some strikeouts tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I told that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, he's a, he's a, basically an unstoppable force and the, and the Royals are a very movable, movable object. object yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I think he'll do. Okay. I firmly agree. I hope that we get some good weather in that game because glass now is a delight to watch. Always seems like he's just kind of himself again, which is uh reassuring given his situation. Oh, so totally. we are on uh glass now over seven and a half minus one forty, and then Kramer over four and a half minus one thirty six. Alcantara over four and a half minus one thirty four in that same game. Now we're not going to get the to lead the night in strikeouts prop up yet because there are a couple teams that have not announced starters yet. The Jays not officially announced their starter. The A's I don't think have either. So there are a couple teams that have left some things open. So we're not going to get that market up yet. But once that market does come out, Rob. Where are you going to turn first? Which guys are you looking to to potentially lead a Friday night in strikeouts over at FanDuel? Well, I mean, I want to see Glass now's number, yeah, uh, because he's got to be the favorite. Like that right. matchup is kind of sick for him. Yeah, um, and I think like Erod could be a, a dark yeah. horse against the Mariners. Like you know, they're known to strike out just a little bit, <laughs> and uh, and he actually what did he have seven and four last time? Didn't yeah. pitch all that great as far as you know giving up runs but his stuff is there and it's sneaky good and he could get a bunch and he might be you know i don't know what the odds are going to be if he's got a good number i would look at that so i uh have the tigers money line today in part because of eduardo rodriguez looking at that first start back off the il velocity was good it was actually better than it was before he got hurt um he was willing to use his uh cutter and his slider so that to me that to me i always care about because i want to know they have confidence in in their health and off speed pitches being willing to use them to me is always a key indicator. 
tonight, and, which is always something he is good at. But like, I know it's the A's too. But like, seeing him do that to me allowed me to overlook the results in that game and focus on the seven strikeouts and the fact that he pitched well. So I agree with you. I think we should be on Rodriguez for tonight because I don't think that can, that that start was as bad as the results would say. I could not agree with you more. That was exactly my logic looking at that. And against a, a team that has some K there, and he's slight, right. you know, kind of under the radar, been picking up strikeouts this year. So that is somebody, you know, I think he's back healthy. I didn't see anything that's going to hold him back. And it wouldn't surprise me, like, if, if you get a good enough number. To take yeah. It. He's a six and a half uh, for the strikeout prop specifically, uh, plus 114 on the over. That to me says he'll probably be. 12 14 to 1 i would say uh to lead tonight and i think that could be intriguing probably longer honestly given glass now's there and glass now sucks up a lot of the the win equity in that market but yes. i think rodriguez is very interesting and hopefully he can do so getting a win not to root against luis castillo because that's not fun but like the tigers think are very interesting and potentially undervalued at plus 166 okay so check out tyler glass now see if you can maybe get a discount there based on Weather based on glass now, you know, having the cramps his last time out, anything like that, or Rodriguez potentially a dark horse against the Mariners for tonight. Rob, I'm glad we're on the same page with Eduardo Rodriguez uh, and the uh, the Tigers one for tonight. I think that's that's that feel makes you feel better about it. I always feel better when we're on, when we're on the same page because a lot of times I'm sitting there talking with you and I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that pick. Like that was actually <laughs> pretty good. You you know, you pull something out and I'm like. Dude, you're the man. See, for me, it's more like I'm very nervous recommending the Tigers to beat the Mariners plus 166, and you say Rodriguez, and I'm like, cool, I'm in, we're good to go, sign me up. My mental like burden is a lot less, so it's a win-win, as always. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is Rob Friedman. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work on Peacock, MLB.com, Fox, and of course here at FanDuel as well. Rob, it is great to have you back on the show. Enjoy the first uh, night post-All-Star break. We'll talk to you once again next week. I'm going to be busy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. All righty. Again, uh, check out all of Rob's great work. Hoping for a lot of Eduardo Rodriguez strikeout gifts for tonight and hopefully a Tigers win as well. We'll talk about why I'm on the Tigers here as we go through some money lines in just one second. But first, take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from strikeout props via Rob Freeman talking about over-unders, who you think will hit first home run, all in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today to get $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball, must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawal bonus bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. And call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text hope and y in New York. Let's dig in now to the money lines for today. Let's begin things off with the Tigers talking about that one we were just discussing with Rob. We were talking about Eduardo Rodriguez before. And as mentioned with Rob, he got bounced around a lot in that first start off the IL. But again, the underlying number is good. Just three hard hit, hit balls and 11 balls in play. Still got seven strikeouts. So to me, when I look at that, when I look at his velocity, you look at his pitch mix, it says to me, he was good, but got unlucky. And I feel like, to me, that gives me faith in putting confidence in what he did before his injury. And if we look at a larger sample on Rodriguez, 34% hard hit rate across eight starts with fewer sinkers and a 29% strikeout rate. 
He's facing Luis Castillo. We love Luis Castillo here on this podcast, but he has had some issues with hard contact at times. So I'm expecting a pretty low scoring tight game. And that does favor the team with a 38% implied odd uh, to win. That's the Tigers plus 166. I've got them around 40%. So to me, Tigers are good value to win for tonight. Plus 166 being their uh, money line right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The other two money lines I like have actually moved a bit since I was looking at them this morning. So we do want to dig in and identify whether there is still value there. As always, you can shop around, potentially still get a discount elsewhere. The first one is the Baltimore Orioles. They are currently minus 130. They were minus 118 earlier on today. The implied odds of minus 130 are 56.5%, and the implied odds of 118 or 118 are 54.1%. So about two percentage points of movement. I have the Orioles around 60% to win. So there is still value there, but I would note once again, make sure you shop around, try to identify if any books are lagging behind when it comes to this market. So you can get the Orioles at a better number. I think there's value at minus 130, but shop around and see what you can get. My model typically likes the Marlins. So I was a bit surprised to see it showed value in the Orioles here, but it comes down to what we discussed with Rob, where Dean Kramer has been really, really good recently. It's a 10 start sample for me on Kramer since he started throwing more cutters. And in that time, he has a 3.75, a skill interactive ERA with really impressive plate discipline numbers. Now I do get a bit worried hearing that Rob has seen some life out of a Sandy Alcantara's changeup because that changeup has been, it was kind of the key pitch for him when he had his breakout was getting that changeup because he previously had a lot of issues with lefties. It nullified that. And if he can get back to being Sandy Alcantara, minus 130 will look pretty rough here. So I would say it's not as intriguing as it was before because there's less value now since it has moved and I've talked to Rob and that does matter for me. So a bit wary about minus 130. I do still like it. My model does still show value. So I would take the Orioles at minus 130, but I would at least give some caution uh, and let you know that this, that the numbers move, there's not as much value anymore. And a person whose opinion I respect says Alcantara may potentially be trending back up. But I like the Orioles primarily because of Kramer, their offense, and disliking the Marlins offense. The second one actually has moved in our favor, uh, which means it's moved against me, which is never a fun feeling. But that's the Chicago Cubs money line. The Chicago Cubs out to plus 110 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. They were plus 102 earlier on, and then they moved to even money. But apparently someone came in and uh, bet on the Red Sox because this one has moved back towards Boston. So that means it could move again. So what I would do is open up your FanDuel Sportsbook app while you're listening. Check where the money line is for the Cubs. If it's still at 110 in an hour or so, I'm recording this at uh, 10, 19 a.m. Eastern. If it's still around 110 or so, around 11, then I'd be okay diving in. Otherwise, if it's still lengthening, I'd hold off. You, know, you, you want to find that inflection point. You want to identify the point where you can get the best number. So if it's still around 110, in an hour or so, I'd be okay diving in. But just check on this market to see whether or not now is the right time. And I get why there's money coming in on Boston because Brian Bay is starting for the Red Sox and he's very, very fun. And I do like him broadly. But I think that the money line here is underselling how well Kyle Hendricks has pitched since returning. Now, this depends on which metric you look at because skill interactive ERA is not into Hendricks. Uh, it's underwhelming at 4.85 since he returned. But to me, the weakness of skill interactive ERA is identifying or quantifying pitchers who are really good at suppressing hard contact. And that's what Hendricks does in his time this year. He has a 32% hard hit rate allowed. And that's why his expected ERA is down to 3.81. When you've got a guy who is an outlier with his bad at ball data, either in the good sense or the bad sense, I put more faith in expected ERA than skill interactive ERA. If they're about neutral, I don't care. I'll go skill interactive ERA because I trust the mechanics of that one and the sustainability of that one more. But in these situations, I skew towards expected ERA and Hendricks expected ERA is 3.81, which is pretty good. I think that contact suppression is a skill. Also, there is some weather in Chicago for today, so maybe there could be a weather delay. If that does happen, though, the Cubs' bullpen, pretty solid. No huge concerns there. They've got a better skill interactive ERA and their active roster in the bullpen than the Red Sox do. So not saying they'd have an edge, but it wouldn't be an active negative if that were to happen. So my pot, my model as the Cubs win odds, 54.6%. Uh, the implied odds at plus 110 
much lower than that as it has moved again against us. So uh, plus 110, the implied odds there, 47.6%. So, you know, again, when you open your app, check out this number, see if it's moved. If it's lengthened more, I'd hold off. Try to see if you can get a better number later on. Keep tabs in that market throughout the day. But if you open your app and see if it's still plus 110 or if it's shortened to plus 105 or something like that, then I'd be okay diving into the cups. I took this, I think, at even money uh, yesterday. So it's moved against me, but I'd be okay with it even if it were to get to even money once again for the Cubs. So three money lines for today. The Orioles at minus 130, the Cubs at plus 110, and the Tigers at plus 166. That's all we got here for today here on Covering the Spread. want to give a big thank you once again to Rob Freeman. Check him out on Twitter at Pitching Ninja. Find his work on Peacock, MLB.com, Fox, and here on Covering the Spread each Friday as well. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Do not forget to subscribe on the Covering the Spread podcast feed or on the FanDuel YouTube page or check us out over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Good luck to you with your bets across MLB for tonight and this weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 